Now, once we get the backend data on the front end using this statement, let's take a look at how we can add a React query and fetch this data and make this data asynchronous and cache this backend data using React query. So I'm going to first open my terminal and here I'm going to say npm i4 install and then I'm going to specify React query. This statement is going to install the React query as a dependency inside this project. Just after that, I'm going to say npm run dev to start the development server. Close this file. Just after that, instead of this get user, I'm going to pass this get user to the React query. So the React query can cache that data and return the data from the cache memory. Instead of making request every time, it's going to return the cache data. So here, instead of this get user, I'm going to get rid of this statement. And at the top here, we need to first say import. We need to import a use query from React query. And once we have this use query hook, you need to call that use query hook right here. So you need to say here use query. And inside this, you need to pass options. So the first option is the key you specify to the cache memory. So inside a single code, we specify user. So this is the tag for the cache memory data. So whenever we make the get request, the use query is going to get that data from the cache memory. Instead of making the new request every time, if the data hasn't been changed, then this is going to return the cache memory data. So once we specify the tag to this request, we specify the get user asynchronous function. So here I'm going to say get user. Now this get user is going to return all the users. If you open the lib helper file, this get user is going to return all the users as a response. So once we return that response, I'm going to back to the table and here this use query hook is going to return some data. I'm going to get that data inside a variable. So I'm going to say here constant in the object. We destructure all this data. So I'm going to specify here an object and then say is loading is error data and error. Now this use query is going to return all these properties from this use query hook. Just after that inside this data, you're going to have your response data inside this is loading. You will get the loading message inside this is error. You will get the Boolean value of error. And then inside this error, you will get the actual error. So what we are going to do is right down here, I'm going to say if, if it is loading, then I'm going to return a division tag with the text employee is loading. Just out of that, if it is an error, so I'm going to say is error, then I'm going to return a division tag with got error message. And then I'm going to print the error, this variable. And if both the statement return false, then I'm going to execute this return statement. And inside this, I'm going to pass this data to this map function. We already have this data variable to this map. So we don't need to add this data variable to it. Let me just get rid of this data.json file right from here. And now just out of that, you need to back to the pages and inside the app.js file right here, you need to add a query provider. You need to create a client so the React query can store all the cache data inside that object. So at the top right up here, you need to import two objects. First is query client provider. And second is query client. And you will get this from react query. Now just out of that, you have to create a client. So I'm going to add here a comment and say create a client. And here I'm going to say constant query client is equal to new query client like this and right down here inside this function i'm going to get rid of this component and i'm going to grab this query client provider and specify that here so i'm simply going to say query client provider something like this or i can just wrap this inside a parenthesis and inside this query client provider i'm going to paste my component and to this query client you need to pass your client so specify the property called client and then specify your client here you can see you already have here a new instance of the client query client so just pass that here that's it as you can see you're going to get the data from the mongodb database as you know in the mongodb database you only have two records so we are going to have both that records as a response inside this ui now let me just change this color of this inactive status if the status is inactive then instead of this green i'm going to return the background color red so to do that i'm going to wrap all these classes first inside inside the template sting something like this and then instead of this pg green here i'm going to say dollar in the curly braces i'm going to say status if 
it is equal to active then return this class bg green 500 or if it is inactive or something else then return bg rows 500 this one now let me save this back to the project and you can see for the inactive user you will get this rose red background color and for the active user you will get this green color so this is a simple way you can get the data from the backend now the react query will automatically cache this data and only execute the api request when the data is updated otherwise it will return all the cache data as a response i have a complete course on react query as well you can check out that course from the top right corner of the screen or from the description